action from closed session. Uh, there was no reportable action out of closed session. And um, are there any additions or deletions to the open session agenda? Staff has none. Okay. Um, so we'll move on to oral communications. This is the portion of the evening that's reserved for uh, the public to comment on items that are not on the agenda. So um, three minutes is a good time for this uh, occurrence. So if anybody would like to come to the uh, podium slash lectern, please uh, do so. Being a board member is a privilege, one that ought to be treated with respect, integrity, and honesty. Now, I know John Hayes hasn't been on the board very long, but I thought he was that kind of a person. At the forum, he read from the grand jury report on Long Pico. He didn't say that the, right here, on the very first page, the grand jury began looking at Long Pico Water District July 2009 and finished its informal investigation, not informal, its formal investigation mid-May 2010. And some things that he read, everything bad he could find in here to say about Long Pico. What he didn't read was in the third paragraph, for the past five years, the district has been operating in the red. And through many years of ineffective actions and neglect by boards of directors and management, staff, LCWD is on the verge of bankruptcy. He didn't read that. He just said it was on the verge of bankruptcy and it was my fault. And that didn't go over too well. People, when I defended myself, they clapped, they laughed. It, it was quite something. So it, they weren't satisfied with that. So they go on the press banner, put their ad on, and let's say in 2011, blah, 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 they don't put the right date, and after Ms. Finney's response, I think it was deliberate. And it's not right. That isn't how board members are supposed to act. And they also, I don't know how many people are here from Long Pico, a couple, um, they blasted Long Pico. They didn't say my name. They didn't say Bill Smallman's name. They said, Woo, do you want people from Long Pico doing the same thing to our district? All I can say to you, John Hayes, is shame on you. Would anybody else from the public like to comment? Please. I didn't have anything prepared about Lois, but <coughs> gosh, we've been trying to get a meeting here for over a year, and yay, we're here finally. It's too bad we couldn't get a meeting here when there were items that people in Lompico were concerned about. And today's meeting, I know, is going to be really short, but it's very significant for Lompico in that. We're going to be celebrating, hopefully, the appointment of Rick Rogers as manager. Rick Rogers was integral to su the success of the merger. He was integral to Long Pico getting by and being what it can be. And I would like to honor him. He was, it was missed out in a lot of the reporting, the significance of his contribution. And I'm really glad that tonight we can say that in Cyan, close to our home, we're celebrating this, and thank you very much. The other significant successes, I think, that are coming are having totally unexpected and are due to both Mr. Rogers and to the state of finally wanting to get the Lompico projects resolved and going. It hasn't been specifically from the board, the board dragged its feet. We've had some roadblocks from the last manager. He's gone, we're still here. 
So I'm looking really a lot forward to the next coming years and things drastically changing. I'm in favor of seeing new faces on this board. But we will get by and we will be here and these projects will get done. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak during oral communication? Um, I don't see any other hands up at the moment, so I'll close out oral communications. And we'll move on to unfinished business. Um, the item is Upper Zangani Creek Streamwood Habitat Enhancement Project Access Agreement. And I think um, Richard, yeah, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Um, so I can't really comment on that one. Um, In 2014, I believe it was, the, um, the board authorized the county and the RCD to pursue grant funding for a project that would enhance stream in-stream habitat for spawning salmon, salmon um, specifically steelhead and coho salmon. The, the Zayani Creek has been identified by the National Marine Fisheries Service as the most important stream in the San Lorenzo River watershed for the recovery of coho salmon and steelhead in our, in our um, region, in our watershed, specifically in the San Lorenzo. And the San Lorenzo is really the southernmost um, stream that the coho exists in. So um, the county and the RCD and the city of Santa Cruz and the San Lorenzo Valley Water District in 2014 um, started discussing how we can improve in-stream habitat. What's happened in Zayani Creek is it's been incised because all the stream wood has been removed and so it's eroded away down to bedrock. And so the stream habitat, and the, um, it doesn't have a lot of cobble and diverse features in the stream bed. And so by putting logs and large wood into the stream, we would recruit cobble and silts and different kinds, of, and it would pool, make pools and um, and falls, and it would just be a more complex stream habitat for uh, salmonids, which they need for all different life stages. And so, um, in 2014, the board um, authorized the county and the and the RCB to pursue grant funding. Uh, took a couple of years to get grant funding approved. And um, we received a uh, fish restoration grant, an FRGP fish, fish from the Department of Fish and Wildlife for the planning of it. And so we've gotten we've gotten through the planning phase now, and these are and the design has been provided um, in the agenda, and we're into the next phase now, which will be to um, to do the ins the installation of the large wood into the stream. And so what we're asking for tonight is um, for permission for the project to take place on the property and, to, and asking for access to the district's um, property that's up on the upper, wa upper watershed in Zyanti. It's, a, it's about a half mile stretch of Zyanti, and then there's a half mile stretch um, downstream from us that's owned by the city of Santa Cruz. So we own the upper half mile and we own the, the lower half mile and it's a one mile stretch and we'll be installing um, large wood into multiple locations along that stretch. Um, the next, and then the next phase, just so you know that this isn't gonna be the last time you hear about this, um, it'll come back again and we'll um, have you consider adopting the, the grant and to enter the cooperative agreement with the permitting, for permitting with the RC. So none of, this is um, fiscally, for us financially, that we're not getting, we don't pay for this project at all, we just uh, are allowing access to our property for the installation of the large wood. Okay. Um. Maybe a little bit of board discussion first, and then I'll go to the public for comment. Um, okay. I, I just had a question. It's been a couple of years since we saw this, and 
they, it's mentioned in here that, you know, ours are, our properties are best because there's not development up there and so forth, and the barriers are upstream from our property. Um, is RCD doing anything in the lower reaches with homeowners, private property owners, or is there, they're putting all their eggs in this basket? At this time for this project, mm -hmm. it's just focused okay. on the city's half mile and the and San Luis Valley Water District half mile. Okay. Um, Any questions? John? It, it looked in the agreement like uh, they're installing the structures. Uh, yeah. But uh, we're responsible for maintaining it for 20 years. Right. Do, you, do we have any idea how complex that's going to be or well, what that's going to cost? The structures are actually designed to withstand large 100-year um, flood events, I believe is what it says. Yeah, and we, we have similar structures installed in watershed up in, uh, we own the upper watershed in Warren Gap and lower in the Zion um, stream. And they're still in place. Awesome. They've been there for a long period of time. Um, Even the cable 2016. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, our watershed analyst, Al Haynes, and CCC crews installed those. If they're a little lower profile structures, but they're still in place for the most part. Awesome. Yeah, a little concern. Okay. Please. So next summer is when it's anticipated that the installation will take place. How long do you, or does Fish and Wildlife, imagine that it will take to have the silt and gravel and cobbles captured by those, in a way, kind of like artificial weirs, yeah. and for the stream bed to start taking on a different character? That's a really good question, and I think it's going to be weather dependent. Mm -hmm. So if we have some really flashy storm events where it picks up a lot of erosion, it'll happen more quickly. Interesting. If they have a really dry winter, it probably wouldn't happen very quickly. You know? So it'll wait until we get some big storms. Mm -hmm. Bill, do you want to? Oh, that's, that's no brainer to me. <laughs> yeah, to proceed. Uh, so that's, that's great. Yeah. I guess I have one question about how main. Does, they're cabled at one end, is that right? For um, And they break away in something really big? and. Or are they cabled on both ends to keep them in the I haven't looked into that How does exact design. I know it's similar to what we did in the lower reaches. Um, they look you know, like they kind of crisscross and, and stuff. They're, they're definitely anchored in strategic parts. Yeah, there's, there's looks like the, uh, the design of the logs is to be sort of crisscrossed. Yeah. And then they'll be multiple, like, bolted and cabled together. So it looks like, you know, each... Each one has three large, um, large logs at least, if, and then um, and then some smaller logs. I find a lot of, a lot of games with the dog and Ali showing me like how the certain settlements and there's also like underneath the trees where the fish hide and stuff like that. You know, exactly. just That's where the brings back the fish habitat and stuff. Right? Exactly. So the juveniles hide underneath the logs yeah. during the summer when when they're uh, feeding and growing. So the in-stream wood is really important for, for the juvenile. Really. So any maintenance, it would be rare that maintenance would be needed to take a very big event, and if it was, it'd be moving. Oh, it would be. Oh, it would, oh, it would be. Oh. So there won't be minor maintenance. It'll be a... Uh, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the root water is kept on the tree, so that acts as an anchor as well, mm -hmm. not just you know, free falling water. Yeah. Some of the logs have root water, yeah. not all of them. There are some of the French broom into the creek. <laughs> so, um, given the fact that there's probably being a lot of trees cut down, okay, is there? Yeah, we will, I've already been kind of asking around about other projects where trees are coming out that we can use trees from other, and PG&E doing their thing. There might be an opportunity to harness some of that for this project. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be looking into that. Okay. It might be a, it might be a good time. <laughs> Unusual timing. Yeah. Okay, um, I'd like to go to the public now. Anybody from the public like to comment on this item? I don't see anybody, so um, let's bring it back here. Um, any other board discussion before we... Um, okay, um, before I ask to take a motion on um, authorization to proceed with this. Um, I'm trying to look for the, okay, 
the wording? Shall I read the wording? Are we ready to go? I, I would move okay. with, that we authorize the district manager to ex execute the access agreement and to authorize the district manager to enter into a cooperative agreement associated with the Asheville permitting. And I second. Okay. Um, can we do this on a voice vote, I think? So all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, none opposed. Great. Okay. Okay. Um, let's move on to new business then. And item A is the district manager employment contract. So either our committee or council or director Bruce kick it off. I, I'm happy to kick it off if Gina would would summarize if there's anything that I have left out. Um, Rick and I had a conversation based on the parameters that the board empowered me with. Um, the template of the district's agreement is based on that which was used for the prior director. It's a fairly standard set of terms and agreements. The um, the concerns that the board raised were regarding in, in I wouldn't say concerns, but really Okay, so yeah, the, just the, the, the parameters were, were defined. Uh, the negotiation resulted in the document that's in the packet, and um, could you? Sh sure, yeah, but um, I think there were only a few changes from right. the prior district manager's agreement, fairly minor. Uh, Points I mean, of clarification. On the side, there were a couple of cleanups, but. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think we're all, we all spotted that one. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. There should be a eight. It says six. There should be eight. No, it's what? totally different dollar amount. Right. Yeah. I think there was a correct version that apparently not the one that's in front of you, but the correct number is the one that's in the parentheses and not the one that's written out. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I see. Yes. Okay. So one one hundred eighty thousand. I printed mine out this morning off the oh, website so. and it's correct. Yeah, it was correct. correct. You must have yeah. the whole version. Okay. This is the what, yeah. And what's posted on the agenda was changed and I, yeah. I, I like I said, printed it. So yeah, what I have is, okay. It's correct. It's correct. It's, I printed it out. Okay. 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 Someone from Eagle Eyes actually yeah. caught that typo earlier awesome. in the week and it was um, corrected, but it didn't make it to all versions in front of everyone. Okay. 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 Um, so I think the, anything else is, is for the board to discuss and move on. Okay. Um, I think my understanding is the only substantive difference is that you weren't willing to accept a small um, hybrid car as your vehicle. Yeah, but, but <laughs> smooth, I don't care about hybrid. But, uh, the district manager prior had a car allowance like three hundred fifty dollars a month. I currently have a district vehicle assigned to me as uh, director of operations, and I want you to keep that. Um, I see no reason to go for a car allowance, so to speak. Um, that was the, the real change in the, in the contract. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me take it to the public then. Anybody want to comment on this item tonight? I Thank you. Any other, anybody from the public want to comment? 
I don't see any, so I'll close up orals on this and bring it back to the board. I think we probably have no more discussion, right? So, somebody like to make a motion? I would very happily make a motion that we um, appoint Rick Rogers and name Rick Rogers as not acting but permanent regular district manager under the terms of this agreement. Second. Okay. okay. Um, and I think we can do this on a voice vote. So, um, Holly? Hi, yes. Director Smallman? Aye. Director Hayes? Aye. Director Bruce? Aye. Director Ratcliffe? Aye. And President Hoffman? Aye. Yeah. Welcome as official. <laughs> <laughs> engineering degree and raise you 42 years of experience. <laughs> we are so lucky. Just a couple quick things, and then we're on a, a, a short time frame here tonight. Um, first off, thank the board for the support. I really appreciate the support for helping make up my, my decision to, to go for the district manager job. I also want to thank the management staff and the district staff, which are an incredible asset of the district for their support. I want to thank the, our people that have spoke up for me, our ratepayers, and said kind things. I'd like to thank the candidates. They've been very nice. Um, I appreciate that, not pulling me into the, to the election. Um, I hope I can live up to, to all your kind words. I really do. Um, I've enjoyed working for the district. I'm part of this district. I'm part of the community. I've been here a large portion of my life. I think I know what the community wants, um, and I'm going to work to, uh, to do that. And I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, let's move on to the next item on the new business agenda, and that is the other um, post employment benefits um, OPEB trust fund administrator. And I think maybe Ms. Elbow can the uh, the staff report. Okay. Uh, so we've taken the, we talked about this a while ago since I've worked here, but we took it to the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, so there are uh, some employees that retire that are offered other post-employment benefits, which is a small contribution towards their, their medical uh, bill. It is, right now the district has been doing a pay-as-you-go method. You are able to set up a trust fund dedicated to these type of things where you are able to earn higher interest rates on it. It is dedicated and set aside specifically for this type of purpose. Um, while the district isn't in the financial situation to fully fund something like this, this is at least setting up the trust fund so that we can have the flexibility of being able to fund something. Um, Similar to like a pension, to, you know, I mean, a lot of it is fun, you know, you are trying to fund it in advance, not doing a pay-as-you-go type of method. We looked at uh, SERP, which is, oh, where's the lovely acronym? California. It's, the, it's, the, it's, it's CalPERS, it's their California Employers Retirement Benefit Trust Fund. Um, and then we looked at PARS. The difference between the two is PARS, is a, they are a for-profit. Um, and then CERT was created to be to kind of follow with the they are the nonprofit agency very similar to us. Obviously, we all are aware of Calpers in general. Um, they offer lower rates, and they've had um, exceptionally high uh, people buying into to their their trust fund as compared to PARS. Um, so for those reasons, I think it's kind of a good fit for, for them. Let alone the fact that you know they do offer cheaper. Uh, they have a lo much lower management fee uh, of the funds and the fact that they're a nonprofit kind of helps instill that you don't have to deal with that dynamic of a company trying to make money. Okay. Um, any more discussion at this point? Well, I've actually got a question. We saw this committee, so I, I, I understand that, but I, and this may not be, maybe we'll have to talk outside. The GASB 75 versus GASB 68, are we going to be having more changes if that comes into effect? Yes. So two years ago, GASB 68 came about, came about mm -hmm. where your future unfunded portion you had to put on onto your balance sheet as a liability. GASB 75 is essentially the same, you know, very similar mm -hmm. thing for the for the OPEB aspect. Okay. 
So it's 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 a similar style, but it does it's not overlaid. It's just covers different funds. It, it okay. is different funds. Okay. And part of that will also be if we start pre-funding this and having these accounts that are earning greater interest, you should be able to over time get to a point to where you're not having to continually contribute because mm -hmm. the interest yeah, that you're earning is helping to self to, to self fund it. As you that bank account grows, mm -hmm. your liability then goes right. down on the on the balance sheet. So it uh -huh. kind of makes it a little bit it, it puts you in a better financial and that brings me to my second question. You mentioned here at some point later in the report, I can't remember where it was, we can start putting just the current year's budgeted amount in there. And if we need to withdraw, we could, is there any penalty associated with withdrawing it? No, you're only allowed to withdraw for the funds that you've expended mm -hmm. on it. Um, so if we started off slow with just a matching type of a program where, you know, it costs, it pays a deal method a thousand bucks this month, will turn around and contribute $1,000 to the fund. If the district were to get into some sort of cash pinch situation, we could then go and request a reimbursement from our OPEB trust fund mm -hmm. for the money that we had expended. So at least starting off, that's definitely the easiest, yeah. safest way to ensure that if we were to get in a situation, um, still yeah, we'd still be able to withdraw the money. Okay. Thanks. So that being said, there really is no financial impact because you'd be spending the money on a paper basis anyway, correct? But we'd be matching. So if it costs, you know, I think it's around twelve thousand and yeah, twelve thousand dollars a year right now. We'd be matching another twelve thousand dollars to go into the, the trust fund. But at any given point, you know, and whatever we you can pull it out. Tribute, and pull it out. Right. Yeah. The match is is like that. Okay. I have. Sounds very good. Okay, um, and it's certainly the is the difference in the um, number of basis points just uh, private versus public? Okay, they need to make a little profit. Essentially, CERF um, has had a lot more agencies join. So I mean, the more the more people you have in it, the more money you're managing. Typically, you know, you're going to be able to to reap some of those benefits of, of having uh, lower fees. Um, the other most common thing I went to one of these seminars a couple years ago. Um, you typically designate someone like the district manager and the director of finance as being the people that can authorize the withdrawal of qualified funds or change the funding, the funding process. So I mean, if if the financial situation of the district continues to get better, then we can start making decisions down the road to contribute more than just the matching to help you know reap the benefits of the the interest that this account can earn to get us to that um, nice point to where it's it's earning a good amount of money. Okay. I picture being something that we discussed probably during the annual budget process. We probably would be able to have an idea of what our contribution plan is on an annual basis. There. Okay. Um, I'll go to the public then. Does anybody want to comment on this item? I don't see uh, anybody putting their hand up, so we'll bring it back to the board. Any further discussion? And if not, then. I liked it when we saw it committee. I think yeah. it's a, a bargain compared to the private one, and the earnings are great. I mean, they're the record of earnings. There's no guarantee, as they always say. But um, I, I think it's a good choice. Yeah, I appreciate Stephanie's uh, keen eye on opportunities for us to do long-term strategic saving and optimize our resources. Okay. So there are three things that all have to happen, so I don't know how you guys can go about one of them will require a resolution. Okay. The first one uh, does not. The second one does require a resolution. Uh, it would be authorizing the district, being the district manager, to enter into the trust agreement. Uh, actually, I take it back. I believe it actually requires the board signature. But it's essentially authorizing us to enter into the trust agreement, so there'll be some paperwork to sign for that. Um, and then the second one is adopting the attached resolution uh, delegating authority to the district manager and director of finance to request disbursement of qualified funds from the trust. And the third one is to authorize the district manager and or director of finance to select the asset allocation strategies offered by SIP. Okay. And I'll offer this to the Budget and Finance Committee first if anybody from such wants to make a motion to can, um, can we do all three as one? Pardon? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. 
Thank you. Never hurts to. <laughs> okay. Um, so, can we do this as one um, one motion to approve all three, including the resolution? Yeah. Uh, resolution probably say, separate. Do you amend it? Two, one and three versus two. One and three. It's the, the motion to yeah. the. Uh, the okay. Um, I'm scanning oh, down. Oh, you want it up here. I'm scanning <laughs> down. <laughs> All right. I um, would move that we uh, authorize the district to enter into the trust agreement and um, for the pre-funding of OPEB and also authorize the district manager and or, should we, and I would say, to the director of finance right. and business services. Um, to control the timing and amount of funding. Okay. Is that a purposeful change from and or to and? Oh, I, I could do and or. That doesn't matter. Do we want to? Do we need discussion on that? Um. I mean, think and. I mean, and or in this case, I think and is the. Uh, is the or version? I mean, it's it says that either can do okay. so. Okay. Is that correct? Yeah, and or means both. Okay, I, then I, I'll amend my motion to say and or. Okay. Um, do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Um, all of it? Can Can we take a vote? vote? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, Director Smallman? Aye. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Bruce? Yes. Director Radcliffe? Yes. President Bachman? Aye. Okay. All right. And yeah, I don't find it in my packet. It's resolution is on. It's formatted a little bit. Uh, oh, is it um, page forty? Page forty. Right. So it's a resolution eight um, eighteen dash nineteen. Right here. Yeah. Did you say 14 yeah. or 40? 4-0. No, it's page, um, page 40. Page 40. Resolution number yeah. 8. 4-0, the packet. Yeah. Oh, I see it. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'll move uh, approval of uh, Resolution 8, 18-19, um, Delegation of Authority to Request Disbursements. Okay. Resolution number 8, 18-19. Yeah. One second. Okay. okay. Um, Holly. Director Smallman. Aye. Director Hayes. Yes. Director Bruce. Yes. Director Radcliffe. Yes. President Bachman. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Good. Um, so that um, moves us okay on to the consent agenda. Um, Bring it to the public first in this case. Would anybody um, from the public want to comment on any um, items on the consent agenda? Okay, I don't see anybody. Um, directors, does anybody want to pull anything from the consent agenda? Okay, I see none. Um, I'll move uh, approval of the consent agenda. Second. Okay. Um, let's just do this up and down vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very well. Consent agenda is approved. Um, district reports. I'll just let staff point out anything. The department status reports, and uh, if you want to go down one by one, uh, the management team's here to answer any questions, or if they'd like to point out any special interest items to the board's attention, I welcome them. Or comments. Let's see if I have anything. Um, well, we can contemplate that. Would anybody in the public want to comment on anything in the district reports? Ms. Yes, just briefly. Uh, last time I talked about the conservation program, and I wanted to commend Jen for including in this report. It's very nice to see um, that kind of rebates are being passed out in the district, and I think it kind of identifies where we need to be. Harder. There's not very many, I was very surprised. 
um, the two toilet rebates, too, those were in my neighborhood, and Ed and I told them about it. <laughs> so um, this is a program I'd really like to see improved. Um, but hand in hand with the conservation, I think we're going to have to think about eliminating the, uh, the uh, what is it called, surcharge, for, for people who do conserve it. But if everyone in the district starts conserving our waste, go up drastically. I think that's going to have to be really looked at. Another method um, decided on how to equalize problems of going up and down with, with conservation because we really need to encourage you know, conservation as the primary goal. I think. Thank you very much. It's a quarterly report, so mm -hmm. it's time. It's a quarterly re report. Good. Okay, thank you. Any other public comment on district reports? Okay, I don't see any. Um, any further board? Just a note, we talked about it, I think, last time. Just congratulations again on the fish ladder clean out um, for the storm. So we're really glad that got taken care of this year since we couldn't make it last year. Okay. Are we good? Uh, I had a, this, this may not be a, an engineering report item, but I have a question about the status of the work on Bear Creek Road. I know we have a workaround pipe there, but the well, wash our project is complete. Okay. And I can't answer what's going on with public works. Fair enough. And we can look into it and uh, respond to public okay. works. I, I can too. And so we don't. operations as well because you know, we have quite a few customers out there at Creek Road. Right. And so, so I was kind of interested to know. It's definitely been spoken to the city that and I guess something else going on that I just the activity on Highway Nine around Dale. Okay, I mean there's a, a lot of district trucks there as we you drive. The last two days. The last two days. Yeah, we had a major leak on the road there, and we're repiping, rerunning some main lines that okay. should be out of there by the end of the week. Okay. Tomorrow's paving, so. Awesome. Okay, great. Thanks for getting on it. I mean, so. Okay, are we good? Okay. okay. Um, so, um, there are, there's one letter of written communications. Anybody want to comment on written communications? Member of the public? Okay, I don't see any. We're good. Mm -hmm. And then there's informational material in there. Um, I guess I've never officially asked this in public, um, take public comment on informational material. Okay, not necessary. Okay. Um, so um, we'll note that is in there. Yeah, it's really an agenda item. It's just for information. Okay. Okay. Um, and since I hear no needed discussion, um, can I hear a motion for adjournment? I had <laughs> this a report. Yeah, we have a couple of directors' reports. Oh, wait, reported oh, yeah. directors' reports. <laughs> They've done. Oh, I missed that. They've done well. interesting things. They want to tell us about. <laughs> Well, okay. Okay, I guess uh, I thought that was happening with everybody under um, district reports. But okay, um, committees. Um, anybody want to comment on their committees um, reports? Oh, yeah. I, 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 oh, committee. I, the I, engineering committee. I can't remember if we had a meeting. Um, yeah, their minutes are in here. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was all prepared for my CSDA <laughs> speech. So I don't have any comments about the engineering for me. Okay. I can't remember what we talked about. <laughs> yeah, I think Bill and I have very brief updates okay. on our CSDA. Okay, go ahead. You first? Okay. I played golf, but I paid for it. I didn't, I didn't learn anything at the golf thing because the guy was like an auditing guy, world like boring, and I'm like, kind of cute. Um, <laughs> so it gets hot down there, you know. Um, people don't walk around. Well, a lot of people that live, the rich people that live down there, they they go away because they, they they don't walk the sidewalks. You got have your dog you can't walk your dog on the sidewalk because your dog can get it, you know feet fried. And then um, there was like a restaurant where there was a, um, a granite bar. And I mean, you could cook, cook an egg on that thing because it's on the sun. So anyway, um, I did socialize a bit more at the conference because it wasn't like the one in Monterey because I was always driving home. So I met, 
and I did talk to a lot of people and stuff like that. So anyway, I'll just go through the uh, different, they have all these different um, classes that you go to, breakout sessions they're called. And, um, and it, it was fun, you know, I have to admit, you know, I really appreciate the public paying my way to go down there and stuff like that, but I did, I did actually learn, you know, quite a bit. Uh, the timing was kind of weird, but I did go to, it was put on by a lawyer, and it's called Public Agency Advocacy, Advocacy the Rules Regarding Lobbying and Ballot Measures. And um, it's ironically, I mean, during the time when I was down there, I actually emailed Rick, because I know that we had a chat session set up with Chuck, and the public agency is not supposed to um, this is more involved with actually city, but when it comes up to an election, that you're not supposed to absolutely not use any public monies that advocating one side or on a resolution or a candidate as well. So I did see kind of a little bit of a problem with having these chat sessions with Chuck, and then the Rick immediately changed it to um, Stephanie, but that was resolved. And then I also did see a problem with we did send out a mailer for all the infrastructure improvements projects that came out right when um, the election came out. So, but that was no big deal. I don't think it's a thing, but anyway, that was a lot, of, that was basically what this um, session was about, you know, because I was interested in that, you, you know, you have to, when you're a public official, you, you know, you, <laughs> you really have to watch, you know, on everything. So, and that was that one. So, and then the next one, uh, I wanted to go this one with settings for the stages to test how to prepare for capital improvement projects, but the room was packed and I couldn't get in that one. So then I went over to more bites for your buck, getting the most out of the value for your district's technology investment. And that was all like I mostly meant maybe we have to improve our website. I think that's something that's up and coming. So it was more about the you know, technology for your special district, improving it, improving the website, and that kind of thing. I'll try to go through this a little bit faster so it's not so boring. But um, uh, then, then I went over to um, Beyond and po Post and Pray, how to recruit the right pool of candidates. At the time, I didn't know Rick was going to get signed on, so I was thinking, hey, you know, learn about um, uh, that. And that was put on by an HR professional. And there was a lot of district managers and stuff in that in that session. And then um, I went to um, best practices of recruiting, hiring, negotiating, evalu evaluating, and terminating board's general manager. Again, that was concerned about that. And actually, that was kind of helpful tips about. They al also went over district manager contracts. To make sure you cover all the all the different situations of, with the contract, which you know I didn't I know Margaret took care of all that stuff, but that was that was interesting. And then one, the other one was, can we all just get along, improving board manager um, staff roles and relationships, and that was different personality types and stuff, things as a director to make things as an organization move smoother along with the. Uh, to make sure your organization, you're not getting out of line, you're not micromanaging, whatever. And then the, the finally, the last one I was most excited about was um, governments in, engaging youth. And um, that was internship programs for college, uh, high school juniors and seniors that we could get. They basically get paid, and um, most of the ones that get approved. Um, get the students get paid a minimum wage, but they actually work with, you know, we might have some kids that are working with a pipeline, you know, go cruising around and, and actually doing work, performing work, engineering, environmental, stuff like that. So um, I, I really, I, I would like to learn exactly more about, I actually know an engineer that works for San Jose Water, his name's uh, Jacob Pierce, or no, um, yeah, and he's a, uh, he was a long time ago, I don't know if I, he says now he's a top senior engineer that works for San Jose Water. And he's always been trying to get a hold, because he was an intern with uh, San Lorenzo Valley Water District a long time ago. And um, so I, I wanted to learn more about that, and then next year maybe talk about expanding that. I think it would be an interesting thing to talk about. 
it was, it was pretty exciting um, uh, that that might be something that we might uh, stand. I know we had those kids that were doing a study or something. I remember when we met me, they were doing that environmental study stuff like that. I don't know if they got paid for it or not, but um, so anyway, and that was it. Thank you. Okay. I, Did I you will, want to come in? On sure. Just I will, I will cut to the chase. The two breakout sessions that I attended that were most valuable and, and uh, timely for, for our needs were one on social media policy that for special districts, many of us are just coming up to speed on the use of social media. It's kind of a brave new world for a, a lot of us. And there are some best practices and there are some I think probably legal considerations around how um, trademark issues and copyright issues are handled in social media contexts and a number of other things. So um, there was a, a breakout session that just sort of brought out all of the different things that a special district should be aware of when they, when they either utilize social media like Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram or anything. Um, so that's, that was something that was uh, that I brought back and raised at the admin committee, and we'll we'll have a forthcoming uh, social media policy to make sure that we say, stay on the right side of all of those requirements. Um, the other session was on district voting, uh, special district voting by district and not at large. So electing their their board members by specific districts, and the the motivation for this isn't necessarily um, like it's now being motivated by someone who wants to use the Voting Rights Act and racial demographics to make sure that there aren't discriminated classes of people being excluded from uh, representation on a special district board and there is a particularly litigious and um, E e eager lawyer or law firm who is bounty hunting and issuing requests for action, I don't know if that's the right word for it, but basically requesting an action that special districts change their voting arrangements according to uh, the demographics of their district. And there have been a number of special districts, particularly in Southern California, who have been hit with what is essentially a, a, a $30,000 do this or else letter. And um, so the, the breakout session was and raising the issue to the awareness of special district members that if they have a diverse community and they want to make sure that their diverse community is represented, it's probably a really good time to take a look at the demographics of your special district and make sure that representation is fair and proper. And um, we put that on a future agenda. Okay, thank you. So any other board discussion on any of the district report sections? Um, committee reports or directed reports? Okay, I think we're done then. And we've already mentioned the uh, written communications and informational materials. So I'll make a motion that we adjourn. And uh, I assume we all, okay, agree. Aye. Okay, anyway, thank you all for coming. Uh, we are now adjourned at um, 718. I think it is.